Hello everyone, uh, welcome to lecture 11 or chapter 11 as uh, my professor calls it. Uh, but basically it's uh, beam analysis. So today for this problem our main goal is to calculate the maximum tensile stress and to calculate the maximum shear stress, right? So as you guys can see right here is um, it takes steps A through, basically steps A through F, you know, is just to calculate the maximum bending moment and the maximum tensile stress and the maximum shear stress, okay? But once we have steps A through F, that's the hard part, you know, G, H, I, these are just uh, simple equations, which I'll show you guys down the road. Okay, so with any, let's start with part A. And any good um, problem, you know, we always have to calculate the reactions first. So in this case, we have the vertical reaction uh, B, Y, and a vertical reaction AY, and there's no horizontal uh, reaction, you know, it's because uh, we've got a pin and a roller here, so it holds it in place, and um, basically we have um, a symmetrical load and a symmetrical reaction force, so, you know, usually we would have to calculate the moment at um, point A or point B and then use a summation of FY to find opposite uh, leg of the force of that, and we can just uh, you know, figure out what the uh, reactions are. But in this case, since the load is symmetrical, we don't have to do that. All we have to do is we just have to find the resultant force and divide that by two, right, because it's symmetrical. So basically, we have 100 pounds per foot. Um, that's basically our height when finding the area, uh, or finding the load. Uh, that's just basically the area. So we got an area of two triangles and uh, we got two triangles, right? We got, we got a triangle here, okay, triangle here, and then we got a rectangle in the middle, right? There's a rectangle here in the middle. So we can do that easily just by um, summing it up. So we got 100 times the distance of 2. So we got 100 times it by 2 and divided by 1 half and times by 2, right? Because we've got triangle 1 here and we've got triangle 2 over here. So these 1 half will cancel. Now it just gives us 200 for the two triangles. And then we need to add the area of this rectangle, which is just 100 times 6, right? And that's just 600. And plus in our 200, it's 800. So that's our FR. And we've got to do 800 divided by 2. And that'll give us 400. And that is our AY, which is also our uh, BY, right? So there we go. We found out the... Um, uh, support reactions at point A and at point B, okay? So now we need to obtain the moment equation in terms of X. Uh, basically, we're doing the sections now. We have to break up uh, this uh, load into different sections. Now, why do they break, up, break it up into different sections? Because um, every time there's a discrepancy in the load where it you know, changes force right here, it's a kind of sloped, it's a flat line here, and it's kind of sloped again. It's a different load distribution. So we have to cut it wherever it changes, like right before it changes. So there will be one cut right here. Maybe yellow is not the best color to use. But um, there will be one cut here, a cut somewhere here. Remember, these cuts aren't, aren't really defined, right? Or not defined. Their location from our uh, origin, which we're going to call... 0, 0, point A. They're not really defined, so we're going to cut. There will be three different cuts because there's three different uh, load distributions, okay? And what I mean by they don't, they're not really defined, I'll show you guys. So basically, every section we do, we have three cuts, so we have three sections. Um, we have to basically draw a free by diagram to help us better understand it. So if I were just to draw this second first part, we'll just look at everything that's before this line, right? So we have our bar. We have our AY right here, which is what we just calculated, 400. And then we have our load going on, just the triangle part, right? Remember, it keeps on going, but we don't, we're not drawing the whole thing because the cut is somewhere here. This is where the cut is, okay? Because this, this doesn't actually end, okay? It's just that that's where we're cutting it. That's where we're cutting it, okay? So this distance right here is X, okay? We're just going to call it X because we don't know how far this cut is or whatever. And um, we don't know what this um, force is anymore, the resultant force of this, just this first triangle. So we're just going to call it F because it's no longer just the height times the length because we, the length is X, you know, how are you going to get it, right? So basically, um, I forgot to write it, but we're doing first section, section one, okay? It's basically from zero because we're starting at zero uh, from point A to um, basically where this uh, where the load changes 
its magnitude, if that's the right word. So uh, 0 to 2 is what we're looking at, okay? So once we uh, find out our, our parameters, right, we need to know uh, what our equations apply to. What we're going to uh, calculate is going to be equations because we got, we got things in terms of x. Okay, so first of all, let's figure out what f equals, okay? So f is just, you know, we have to integrate it from, if this is point zero and that's point x, you know, if you integrate the, the if you get the, if, if you find the area under the curve, that's the uh, total force, right? So we're going to integrate from zero to x, and basically the curve, well, what's the curve? It's the equation of the line. And in this case, um, it's pretty simple because if we take point a as point zero, zero, it, there's no y intercept, so it's just the slope of the line, and it's positive, right? So it's rise over run, right? Rise over run. And that gives us what's rise? It's 100 divided by 2 because it's just it goes up to 100 in 2 feet, right? So 100 divided by 2, that's just 50. So our equation of the lines is 50x, right? Don't forget the x, okay? And dx. So if we integrate this, we get 25x squared, right? And we got plug in 0 to x. But we plug in 0 to x, that'll give us exactly 25x squared. So I'm just going to save us a little bit of work and space. And just leave it like that, okay? Now, that's not a shear force, okay? I forgot to draw that, but our shear force is this V1 here. And we also have to find a moment 1. We're calling it 1, a subscript of 1, because we have three sections. So we're going to find M1, M2, M3, and V1, V2, V3, okay? So we're trying to find V1, that's the uh, shear, and that's the moment, okay? Now, to find the shear, we always find a share first. That's we can just do the summation of f y equals zero. Okay, and if we do that summation f y equals zero, uh, we can clearly see that you know we just have two forces acting on it. Right, we got a y, which was what we calculated up here, 400, um, and then we have to minus what the force is, which is what we calculate here, minus 25 x squared. Okay, minus our v1, which is what we're trying to find right here. Forgot, I mean, three forces, I guess, if you count V1, must equal zero, okay? So now we just have to solve for V1, and that's just basically 400 minus 25x squared. And that is our shear, right? That is um, the shear. And to find M1, that's basically just integrating the indefinite integral of the shear equation, okay? So 400 minus 25x squared dx and then that will give us 400x minus whatever 25 divided by um, 25 divided by 3 is which is 8.33 um, x cubed yes and we have to add a plus c right and in the first section it's we can clearly see right here that you know this moment to find we have to find where the moment is at point zero from like if we had like a uh, beginning section like if we had a section zero or something and we can clearly see that it's zero because if we have a moment here the a y wouldn't matter because it's on the moment and this force you know it's not it doesn't have anything impacting it over here we don't we don't know if we plug in x equals zero into the force you know that goes 400 but over here in the beginning it's zero okay so it balances on the other side um you guys will understand this more once we do it uh, do the other practice, or not the other practice problems, but the other sections. So basically our moment at M1 is just, um, our moment equation is 400x minus 8.33x cubed, okay? And this goes to zero, okay? So that's our first section. That's our section one. All right, so now we have section one, now we have to work on section two now, okay? So let me go ahead and uh, just change the slides. We got a little bit more uh, room. Okay, so now we got a new workspace. We basically want to start again by drawing a free body diagram, right? And since we already done section one, we, we, we can just treat that triangle, just that triangle segment, as a constant force, okay? And what do we calculate this as? It's 100 times it by 2, which is 200, and 200 divided by 2. Well, that just gives us um, 100, right? Because that's the area of this triangle right here, okay? And that is, oh, let me add AY before I forget. AY, what we got earlier was um, 400. So our AY is 400. And this distance from AY right here is 2. And this um, 
Oh, it's not two, guys. My bad. Because um, I forgot to do one thing that's really important. This isn't exactly acting right here. It's two-thirds of the way from point A or one-thirds from, you know, this side right here. Because it's a two-thirds rule of the triangle, guys. Because that's where basically where the center of mass is acting it down on, okay? So it's two-thirds the way. So two-thirds two thirds times that by two, well, that equals four thirds. And I'm just going to put that in decimal form. And that's just one point, um, 1.33. And this, this whole distance right here, we call X. Okay, let's get this out of the way. And basically where two is, okay, this right here, let's call this. I don't know how, I'm, how am I going to do this right here. That's two, okay? And this is where a rectangular force starts, uh, starts, okay? And that just keeps going over there. And same thing, we gotta find this force because it's no longer just the length times the height, okay? So, to do that, we again start with finding the force again. So, force of the rectangle is basically from the integral. But remember, it's not zero anymore. We're not starting at zeros over here, okay? We're starting at two because that's where this rectangle starts. So we're going from 2 to the distance of um, x, okay? We don't know. Then so 2, 2 is right here, and x is over here. So 2 to x is the distance we're going to. And basically, we got to find the equation of this line. Well, this one's really easy because it's a flat line, right? So there's a y-intercept, but it's just a y-intercept. There's no x. So it's just y equals to 100, the height. That's the equation of the line right there. So 100 dx. Okay, so if we integrate that, that gives us 100x from the bounds of uh, 2 to x. And if we plug that in, we get uh, 100x minus 200. Okay, so that's our force of the rectangle. And now I keep freaking to draw this, but you know that's our v2. We're doing v2 now because it's section 2. And that's m2, okay? And let me go write this down before I forget again. Section 2 is basically from, you know, we're done with section 1. And section 1, if we look back one, if these guys can see, section 1 ended at 2 right here. So we're going to start at 2. So 2 is less than or equal to x, less than or equal to wherever this ends at. This ends at whatever 6 plus 2 is, right? Because the line, the boundary line is right here. And 6 plus 2, that's 8. So we just have to find the shear and moment. Okay. So to find the shear, we always begin to find the shear. We take the summation of Fy. Again, just like before, it must equal to zero. And to do that, we have our Ay, right? We 400, that's positive, minus the 100 from this uh, triangle over here, minus um, what we just calculated for our force, which is 100x minus 200. And that must, or we have to minus our v1, which is, or not v1, v2, our second share, and that must equal zero, okay? So now we can solve for v2. And that just equals 400 minus 100. So, and this negative makes a positive right here, makes plus 300, right? Or not 300, 200. So 400 minus 100 is 300, 300 uh, plus 200 is 500. And 500 minus 100x, that is um, our share equation. And now we have to integrate this again to find our moment. So it's just an indefinite in integral of our share uh, equation. And that would just give us 500x um, minus 50x squared plus c, okay? Now in this case, our c is no longer zero, all right? It's something else which we have to calculate for. And how we can calculate this? Well, as I mentioned earlier, this starts at two, right? And the previous uh, moment equation, or moment one equation, moment one, right, ends at two. So whatever this x value is at two, you know, if we plug in two for this one, for this x, and then we plug in two for this equation, they must equal each other, right? Because they both, have a endpoint, or this one's an endpoint at two, and the other one has a start point at two. So they have to equal each other, or else this whole thing wouldn't work out, wouldn't make any sense, right? So let's go ahead and write out our m1 equations. And the other slide, it's a 400x. So our m1 equals 400x uh, minus 
x cubed, I think. Yeah, x cubed. Okay, so now we can plug in uh, x equals 2 because that's our end point here, and that's, or that's our starting point here, and our end point at m1. So m1 of 2 equals, well, if we plug in 2 for x right here, we get 2 times 400, which is 800. And we got the minus um, 8.33, um, well, 2 times 2 is 4, 2, 4, 8, all right? 2, 2, 4, 2, 4, 8. And if we plug this in the calculator, 8 times 8.33 and 800 minus that, we get a grand total of 733.36, okay? So now 700, we just got to set these equal to each other, 733.36 must equal the shear right here. I'm going to have to share uh, the moment equation over here Once if we plug in 2 as well for this x. So 500 put in 2 minus 550 put in two. I'm just going to square 2, right? Because 2 squared, that equals 4. So I'm just going to put in 4 right here plus c, okay? So now we can solve for c. So c equals, if I put this in the calculator again, so five times two, 500 times 2 is 1,000. 1,000 minus uh, 50 times 4 is uh, 800, and 733.36 minus 800. That will give us uh, negative 66.64. So that's what our C is. So now we found our M2. You know, we just have to put it back together. So it's 500x minus 50x squared minus 66 0.64. And there you go. And that's our uh, moment equation for our section 2. Okay, so now uh, we have to finish, uh, finish it off with our third section, right? So let's go ahead and uh, start a new slide again. So we remember now we're on this section right here. And you know, with any good uh, calculation, we have to draw a good free by diagram. So let's go ahead and draw that. Uh, this is N somewhere here. Uh, and our AY again was not 100 but 400 and then our triangle load from the triangle was 100 that line pressure be that slanted and this distance was I mean the distance isn't really doesn't really matter since we're using integrals but if we were to do it the algebraic method this would really matter and that's 1.33 and then we have the load of this rectangle, and the rectangle is just 6 times 100, which is just 600, and this distance, that's just the middle, there's no 2, there's rule for rectangles, it's the center of 6, which is 3, 3 plus 2 is 5, and then here, somewhere here, is where we, we start the triangular load distribution, okay? So this distance all the way back is x, okay? So if we were to assume this point is 0, 0, all right, and this um, this is f, we don't know it, right? That's what we've got to solve for first. So to calculate f, okay, to calculate f, we get, we would need the equation of the line, but what would we integrate from? We would integrate from not 0, not 2, but from wherever this force starts at, which is, um, 6 plus 2, which is 8. And then 8, we would have to go to x, because that's the distance we're integrating to. But we don't know. This equation of the line isn't as easy to find, right? Um, because if we were to extend this line all the way up, right? Probably shouldn't use white. If we were to extend this equation all the way up, right? And this, let's just say that this right here is the um, y-axis. And we'll keep going. It would have a y-intercept right here, somewhere up here, okay? And you know, it's just not the slope anymore. So we have to use a very important equation. If you guys remember this from pre-algebra, I mean, it's uh, y minus y1 equals m, which is the slope, times x minus x1, okay? Now, lucky for us, we do, in fact, know what um, our y1 and x1 is because we can just take this point right there, okay? Now, we know that height is 100. And we know that this distance right here is um, 8, I think, right? Yeah, because we're starting at 8. So if we used point 0.8100, we 
we can find the slope because it goes for it to go down it's two so remember the slope is the same as the first triangle it's a hundred divided by two because that distance is right here is two feet and its height is a hundred so remember it's what rise over run so but in this case it's negative because it's going downwards so it's negative 50x we're going to keep a negative 50 right now so we can do y minus y1 which is 100 equals negative 50 x minus um, x1 which is 8 so we got y equals negative 50 x and whatever 50 times 8 is, that would be a positive, that would be 400. But 400 uh, plus another 100, that's 500. Okay. Okay, so now we can integrate this, because now we have the equation of the line. Just by using the point-slope form. So we have negative 50 x, um, whoops, 50 x, okay plus 500 dx. Okay, so if we integrate this, we get negative 25 x squared um, plus 500 x, and our bounds is 8 to x. Okay, if we plug in x, everything will stay the same, so it's 25 um, x squared plus 500 x uh, minus, right, because we're doing the lower bound now, 8 squared is 64, and 64, we'll probably put this minus sign too, um, 64 times it by 25 is actually uh, 1600 uh, plus 8 times 500, which is just uh, 400. That's, that's a thing. And we just have to simplify this down and clean it up a little bit. So this actually equals 25x squared plus 500 x and that is well f uh, 4,000 minus 1,600 equals 2,400 so it's minus 2,400 okay so that is our f and now we can do the summation of fy to find the shear right so we have our aoy that's 400 I have a small triangle which is minus 100 so we got that out of the way that out of the way got minus 600 from the rectangle and now we just have to do the force so we just have to flip these signs I'm just gonna do it as we go right so because it's a minus out front we can do the parentheses here but we're gonna distribute the negative as we go so it's negative 25 x squared minus 500 X plus because minus minus 2400 minus b1 equal to 0 okay um, equals to zero. Okay, I'm sorry, that's hard to see, guys. But we can just solve for V1 now. Um, I'm going to put these down first. We have 500x Alright, I thought I was missing something. I'm sorry about that uh, odd cut, guys, but um, I forgot to actually bring this negative sign down right here. Um, right here, you guys probably were wondering what was going on, but this negative sign is going to put it back where it belongs. So now when we distribute, it's not negative 25x, it's positive 25x squared. So V1, or not V1, I keep running V1, I'm sorry. It's V3, V3, and we have 25x squared. Okay, get cross that out. Um, and we have minus 500x. And let me go ahead and type these things. So 400 minus 100 is 300. 300 minus 600 is a negative 300. And we got to add 2,400 to that. And that will give us um, 2,100. So that's our shear at section 3. And now to find M3, we just have to integrate this. That's M okay so now if we integrate 25 x squared um, 25 x squared minus 500 x plus 2100 dx that would just give us um, whatever 25 divided by 3 is that was 8.33 
x cubed minus um, 250. Is that? I don't trust myself, guys, but yeah, 250 x squared <clears throat> plus 2100 x plus c. Okay. <clears throat> So now we just have to figure out what C is again, and we can do the same trick we did before. We go back to section two, we can plug in. Um, I forgot to write one thing. This part right here is from our limits. I forgot to write our limits. It's from eight to uh, 10, right? It's okay. 10, yeah. So now we can plug in eight for the previous one. So I'm gonna clear this to get some more space, guys. Okay, yeah, so now I've cleared some space, we can just go back to M2. Go back a slide, our M2 is 500x. Um, minus 50x squared. Uh, minus 66.64. Okay, so now when we plug in um, our lower bound, right, 8, because that's where it ends here, up here, ends at 8. We just do M2 of 8, that would just equal 4,000 minus 50 times 64 minus 66.64. And our M2, well, if I type this in the calculator, 4,000 um, minus 50 times that by 64 minus 66.64, that, that would just give us uh, 733. Point three six, right? Okay, so now we can just set this equal um, to our what we got here, uh, this part right here. So eight point three three times it by eight cubed minus two hundred fifty. I'm just gonna square the eight, which is sixty four, and my or plus two thousand one hundred and put the 8 in, plus C, now we can solve for C. Um, I'm going to type this in the calculator real quick again, so 8.33 uh, times it by 8 cubed, that will give us uh, 4,264, um, minus 250 times that by 64, uh, plus 2,100, times it by 8, and we got 733.36 minus that, we get our C value, which is negative 4,331.6. So now we can just put it all back together again, our M3 is 8.33 x cubed minus 250 x squared plus 2,100x minus 4,331.6. And there we go. We have all our moment and shear equations now. And we can finally go on to find um, what we were originally looking for, our maximum tensile stress and our maximum shear stress. Okay, so now we have everything. We can move on to step G, which is... Uh, we have to draw the moment diagram along the beam, right? So basically, if we were to put all our equations together um, for the different sections, so if we were to graph these with the um, with the proper bounds, right? So this one would be 8 to 10. We would graph this equation. Um, I'm saving us some time, but if we were to graph them, uh, hopefully if you guys take these uh, status classes, they'll provide it to you, especially if things online now. Um, but this is what we're going to get, okay? So we have to calculate the maximum bending moment. So the maximum, let me, let me, the really important to know is, is the maximum bending moment. That's just uh, to find what the maximum moment is. Okay, so there's really no equation for this. We, we um, solved, we found the equations for that. And we can clearly see that the maximum moment is at, um, basically if we look at this bending moment graph, it's at x equals five, right? So x equals five, um, we can go back and look at which parameter fits that, okay? So this is this equation, this moment equation would be from 8 to 10, which is not, 5 would not fit there. But for this equation, uh, for section 2 and 8, 5 would be in between here. So we can use this equation, M2, 
to find our maximum bending moment. So we just got to write this down, 500x minus 50x squared. So m2 equals 500x minus 50x squared and uh, minus 66.64. That's the equation of our maximum bending moment. So now we just got to plug in um, x equals 5 to find out what the value is. Now I can kind of eyeball it, see it's 1,200, but just to make sure um, everything's right, right? So, okay, um, M2 of 5, that's a M. I'm, I can't read my own handwriting sometimes, but it's okay. So 500 times it by 5 minus 50, 5 squared minus 66.64. And that's our maximum bending moment. So let me go ahead and type that in calculator. 500 times 5 minus 50 times 25 minus 66.64. That will give us 1,183.36 pounds foot. Okay, so that is our maximum bending moment. Um, so we got G done. Now we just have to calculate the maximum tensile stress. Now this is where we have to use the equation. The maximum tensile stress is, um, that's the shear, but the maximum tensile stress is basically, if I remember, the tensile stress is equal to the maximum uh, compressional stress, which is also equal to 12 times the maximum uh, bending moment times that by C all divided by base times height cubed of the cross section okay and C is actually equal to H over 2 so if we solve for C our H is given to us as 0 0.25 divided by 2 which is um, 0 0.125 okay so we just found M right this goes right here and this goes right there, and we can just plug it in. So OT max equals 12 times 1183.36 times that by C, which is 0 0.125, divided by base, which is 0 0.5, and the height is 0 0.25 cubed. Yes, I think that's all there is to it. But um, so I'll type down the calculator: 0 0.125 cubed times 0 0.5, and then we got the numerator 12 times 1183.36 times 0 0.125 divided by that small number. Okay, so this gives us a really big number: 18. One seven six four zero point nine six. Whoops, I forgot to uh, multiply by that one number down there. I was checking my calculations. It's actually one seven seven five point zero four. Not the best rounding job, but you know we'll get close enough. So we got the maximum tensile stress. Now we got to find the maximum shear stress, which is um, this equation: T max equals to uh, V max. It's the maximum shear divided by base times height. Okay, easy, right? So we're gonna just look at this graph here. We can see that the maximum shear is at zero. At x equals zero is max. Okay. So now we just got to go back and find our V1 equation because this is corresponding to section 1. Zero is right here. So that's the right one to use. So it's just 400 minus 25x squared. So V1 equals 400 minus 25x squared. If we plug in 0 into x, we just get V1, which is also equal to V max is equal to just 400. Okay. So our T max is equal to... 400 divided by base times height, so 0 0.25 times that by 0 0.5. So 0 0.25 times 0 0.5, 400 divided by that, we get 3,200. 
And uh, we can also add units. Okay, guys, I just... I'm sorry uh, for these weird cuts. I just can't seem to type this to my calculator. But no, this this part is correct, okay? This, this part is very correct. I just can't seem to <laughs> type it to my calculator properly. It's actually 227,136 um, pounds per square feet, if that's a correct notation. I'm pretty sure it is. And this is actually in um, 3,200 um pounds per foot squared, right? Because, um, you know, we just divide by, these. this is on feet, so. And there you go, guys. That's how you basically find the maximum shear and tensile stress. I know it's a long and pretty tedious process, but we have to check all the sections. That's really the biggest key part in this. The last section is just plugging it in into the right equations. And, um, Make sure if they give it, usually the cross section, if they give it to you in inches, make sure you multiply it by additional 12 so you can convert it to inches, like pounds per square inch instead, PSI, right? But, um, you know, we just have to check every section and basically uh, find out where the maximum, maximum, if we look at the graph, the maximum uh, bending moment, the maximum shear forces. So, you know, it's like calculus where we test critical points to find the maximum and the minimum. And so hopefully uh, this video will help you guys out, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks.